Ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to April, and it is finally Oscar month. <laughs> For the first time in 14 months, it's Oscar month, and we're going to kick off here this weekend with the uh, Screen Actors Guild Awards, uh, which are on Sunday. Now, uh, you'll have to forgive if you hear some background noise. It is laundry day, and it's like laundry stuff is right here, and I didn't have any other time today or this weekend to uh, go ahead and throw in my predictions before the show on Sunday night. So you'll, you know, just real life stuff, you'll just have to deal with that for this video here. Um, anyways, um, so we have uh, six film categories being presented on Sunday night. Uh, stunt ensemble and then uh, four acting categories and film ensemble. And uh, I did also uh, catch The Father as well, so I need to talk about that one here. Kind of give a brief review when we get to that one. Um... So, uh, we have a few things to say about that. I, I yeah, yeah, I've got some things, uh, good, uh, all, all good stuff, by the way. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I, I, it's, uh, it seems like it should be a pretty easy SAG Awards, right? I mean, Judas and the Black Messiah for Ensemble, uh, Delroy Lindo for Actor, uh, Yuri Han for Actress. We're looking at uh, Supporting Actor going to, um, uh, Alan Kim for Minari also, and then Supporting Actress should be Jodie Foster, right? And Stunned Ensemble... Peyton Manning. No, I'm kidding. It's, it's, <laughs> look at what day this video went up. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Enough April Fool's Day jokes. Uh, but anyways, one thing, though, if you do happen to find my Gold Derby profile, one thing that's not an April Fool's Day joke is, uh, for whatever reason, they closed their predictions early, like really early. So the last time I updated them was on February 4th. So <laughs> what I have officially listed there is wrong <laughs> for three categories. Three categories I have since changed my mind on. The other three I have not. But, uh, yeah. We'll go ahead and get started here, though. Uh, with that stun ensemble category, um, realistically, this could be one of the more uh, open races uh, of the night, aside from supporting actress, probably. Um, I think The Five Bloods is probably primed to win this one. I have It is my official pick, by the way, it is, uh, in this category, The Five Bloods, just because it is the ensemble nominee. I mean, so is Charles Chicago 7, sure. But, uh, you know, you've got Chadwick also nominated for The Five Bloods, so it feels like it's uh, more their pick here. Uh, Mulan is definitely going uh, to uh, pose a challenge there. And even, um, you know, Chicago 7, I think, maybe is not totally out of the realm of possibility here in case uh, we know it's very likely to lose supporting actor for Sasha Baron Cohen. Uh, arguably, he's in third or maybe even fourth place there. Um, and then... Um, for ensemble, I mean, if Minari is really going to pose a challenge here, it could go over uh, over three here, um, unless they want to give it that stunt ensemble if they feel they absolutely have to give it something. But I I put it at a very very distant third. Um, I think just because you know it's not it's not their typical pick here. When they do have one that lines up with the ensemble, they did have a couple years ago with Black Panther. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's another thing. This one, it's like, you know, Black Panther was more an obvious pick in that category. But here, Chicago 7, it's not, obviously, not a stunts movie. So I, I don't think so. It, again, just on the off, 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 off chance that they uh, they can't find any other place to really award it and they just happen to pick it there, okay. But it's like, yeah, again, I really don't view that as a, as a high possibility. Okay, so I think it is to Five Bloods, by the way. Uh, for the other two, yeah, News of the World, I don't think so. And then uh, Wonder Woman. I, they gave the first Wonder Woman uh, the stunt prize here three years ago, but I I don't know. This one, obviously, the first Wonder Woman had a PGA nomination. Um, it had plenty going for it that year. And this one, 84, no. No, not so much. I mean, I still liked it. I still... Uh, thought, you know, just real quick on, I don't know if I've talked about that one or not before, but I, I like the way they went all the way with going kind of 80 cheesy, you know, for the most part. I respect that. You know, most films, you know, would probably try to be super serious in some moments and then would completely abandon the cheesy stuff outside of like the opening and some of the other moments there. But um, no, it, it went all the way with it. So um, I didn't like every last bit of it, of course, but um, but yeah, you know, that's that's that one. Okay, so supporting actress here. This one is probably the diciest category of the night, uh, probably. Um, so we've really got, I think, four people that are legitimately in uh, competition here. Of course, you got Glenn Close, Maria Bakalova, Yu Jun Yun, uh, or Yu Ya Jung, whoever, uh, however you pronounce. Uh, I've seen obviously they. Uh, it's a cultural thing, kind of switch the last name around and stuff. Um, and Olivia Coleman. 
Um, all four of them, I think, are are in striking distance here. Uh, poor Helena Zangle, I don't I don't quite think so. Um, and of course, she's the only one of the five here that did not get the nomination at the Oscars. That was, of course, Amanda Seyfried, who was kind of more of a shocking surprise when she did not land here on SAG's nomination morning. Um, so in this case, I think, in all honesty, Glenn Close, a lot of people are picking her. Uh, it's definitely she's definitely uh, pulled ahead here in the last uh, few weeks here. And I think there is, I mean, she's a very popular actress. Hillbilly Elegy also got the, the lead actress nomination for uh, for Amy Adams. So it's definitely, you know, it's definitely a little stronger here than it might be at, say, BAFTA or, you know, a couple of those other ones. And I don't think, did it even land anything at BAFTA? I can't even remember. I know Glenn didn't get in, uh, did not get in there and a few other ones. So I can't even remember if I got anything. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's uh, clearly going to do better uh, here as far as votes, you know, total and stuff. Uh, maybe even then the Oscars. We'll see. We'll see. But um, that being said, she did, she did win for The Wife. It ha- if it had been the other way around, if Olivia had won SAG uh, a couple years ago for The Favorite instead, obviously that would have changed the dynamics of the race. But um, I don't know. I think uh, Glenn would be a more... Um, th- yeah, she would have been more obvious pick here. If that year Olivia had won Critics' Choice and SAG on top of the BAFTA and the Oscar, I think, yeah, then I think we would have seen more of a... Uh, even with all of the reviews and stuff on Hillbilly Elegy and the negative reception to it for the most part, uh, I think we still would have seen a more charged, you know, cry for her to win for this one. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just because she won so recently, I'm going to put her fourth. Um, and then third, I originally had her to win here, uh, is Olivia Coleman for The Father. And uh, I think... That's you know I have her head of Glenn because she did not win here at SAG um, and SAG I think for the most part does really like to line up with their Oscar winners unless you know it, the winner is not even nominated here which was Regina King here a couple of years ago so that's you know Emily Blunt won here for A Quiet Place in a pretty I, I think startling win there for my, for myself uh, but uh, yeah last year they went four for four um, in 2017 everybody went four for four for the acting categories and then. Um, I'm trying to think here. 2016, I think Denzel was the only one that got wrong, right? Um, the other three, I think they lined up on, um, if I'm remembering correctly here. Yeah, Viola Davis, uh, Mahershala, and um, uh, Emma Stone. So, yeah, SAG is one of the more predictable ones for getting it right, too. Um, and I think Emily Blunt, other than Emily, I think they got, uh, and Olivia, I think they got the other two, though, uh, in 2018. Um, they got Rami, and that set him, you know, on the track to win. And then um, supporting actor, oh yeah, Mahershala again. So um, yeah, so, yeah. So that's only what three misses in the last um, uh, in the last uh, four years there or so, three years. So yeah, they're pretty predictable there. So um, anyway, so I-, I thought Olivia is ahead here though, just because I'm like uh, of Glenn at least, uh, because she didn't win for the favorite and the father. You know, it has the same number of nominations as Hillbilly Elegy, but clearly is much further, further ahead, even at this point in the race where these were nominated uh, in the Best Picture race, for example, screenplay, etc., all those other uh, categories there. So, um, I don't know. I think the father and her performance in it, you know, it's it's good. I don't know if it's enough to win in this category over uh, some flashier names like Maria, ba- Maria Bakalova, who won for Critics' Choice, and Yu Young Jung, who could be the only um, winner for Minari here. So, um... Yeah, so I'm putting her third here. So uh, really quick, let's let's talk about the father then. Um, I it's it's a pretty powerhouse movie, I think, um, in in many ways. Uh, but I think initially my first reaction was that it's it's a really really could be viewed as a horror movie. And I was you know I was kind of like when I was after it was over, I was like I'm probably the only person who said and like no, there's like 30 other reviews out there I read that said it's very much like a horror film. I'm like ah. Oh. Okay, everybody got it, but yeah, I mean, holy cow, Anthony Hopkins. I mean, he gives, yeah, this is undoubtedly his best performance, um, uh, definitely since Amistad. Uh, I, I still haven't caught up with the two popes, so maybe that one is up there, but um, but like, yeah, Amistad he was fantastic in, obviously Silence of the Lambs, um, Shadowlands and Howard's End, you know, he kind of, you know, those two kind of came out around the same time, and both of those were very well-regarded performances. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's arguably a career best for, for Anthony Hopkins. Um, and, uh, just absolutely a, uh, if you know anybody who's 
had dementia, like myself, I've mentioned, I think a few times here, my uh, grandmother who passed away a couple years ago now, um, uh, coming up on three years ago this year, um, she had dementia pretty bad. And for the last year and a half, she was in a nursing home. Uh, my grandfather passed away about a year, a little under a year after she did. Uh, he had early signs of dementia, but he wasn't officially diagnosed. She pretty much was unofficially diagnosed, but, you know, was put in the, the ward and stuff. Um, and he died of, uh, he had like a congestive heart failure and some other stuff going on there. Uh, fluid retention and all that stuff. And, you know, we're shutting down the organs, all that. I, I forget what the official designation is, but anyways, um, so yeah, there's a lot of moments here that that hit me pretty hard. There's, I mean, I I'm proud to say I held it together. There's one part in the third act. Obviously, I can't say what it is if you're if you haven't seen it yet. But there's one part in the third act where I I was this close to breaking. It was so just gut wrenching. Just uh, everything that happened there in that scene. Um, and it's it's with when there's only like 10, 15 minutes to go. It's it's around that range. It's there's a kind of a it's kind of the last, when we get into the last set piece of the movie, if you will, for those who have seen it, that might be, okay, there's several spots where you might have broken, so who knows. Uh, it was like when the last kind of set piece is kind of uh, starting to come into view there and stuff. It's like when there's one particular scene there that just was, oh, just so, just so heartbreaking. And, uh, yeah, that that scene and several others have stuck with me. Um, I'm, I'm still in my head going around saying, I am not leaving my flat! That's still buzzing around my head all this time later. Um, it's been about a week since I've seen it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, um, hats off, though, to Florian Zeller. This uh, one comment, I don't, I don't think anybody said this, though, about the film. I don't know how the hell, the way it's staged in this movie, I don't know how that can even get close to being pulled off as well as it did in this film on stage. Like, there's certain scenes and certain moments where I'm like, I don't know how you could even come close to replicating that on stage. It's so, I mean, obviously I, I get this is a film and it's, you know, uh, adapted by Zeller and, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hampton, uh, somebody Hampton, I can't remember his first name, but, uh, he's, yeah, he's like nominated for Atonement and one for Dangerous Liaisons, I believe. So, um, Christopher Hampton, that, I think that's it. Um, did a beautiful job adapting this to the screen. It's definitely of the, you know, play to film adaptations this year between this and, uh, Arguably, I, I, it's not—it's not a direct adaptation. I mean, there's no because there's nothing to adapt from. But like um, Malcolm and Marie, and One Night in Miami, and uh, Ma Rainey's. This is my favorite of the bunch, um, and I think mainly—I mean, not solo to do with it, but uh, partially because you, it's really hard to tell that this was a. I mean, it's—it's it's not. I don't know. I don't know how to phrase it. It's like you can tell, you can see in some ways where it can be a stage play, but there's other times, again, where it is so damn good at being a film and not being a stage play that it makes you say it's impossible to do this on stage. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I really think they did a, just a great, great job with that. Um, and, uh, yeah, Olivia, you know, she has a nice, uh, supporting role in there and she's definitely one of the more, uh, uh, great focal points of the film. She's, you know, the, the one we empathize with the most, you know, um, you know, she's kind of the character, you know, everything that we're seeing is almost through her eyes, even when she's not in the same scene. Um, she's that, you know, relatable character there. And I think, yeah, she does do a, a good job with the material she's given there. It's not a big flashy role as, as the favorite. It's definitely a more subtle role and, um, you know, and playing it as well as she did, it's definitely yeah, a good sign that, um, that yeah, she is one of the more um, gifted actresses working right now, um, and yeah, Zeller's direction was great. Um, there's, I mean, there's so many moments where you just again with the horror thing where it's like you just kind of sit there, just like, oh my god, no, not this, and it's like all sorts of stuff is going on, and it's yeah, again, once you get into it, once you know what's ha once you kind of start piecing it together, and it, it doesn't take forever. It's you know within the first you know twenty, twenty five, thirty minutes tops, you kind of get what's going on. And then as it evolves and as it keeps going, it's it's as exciting, as entertaining in many ways as Parasite was last uh, last year or two years ago now almost. Because um, that did premiere at Cannes, if I remember right. Uh, it, it, maybe if it didn't premiere there, it showed at Cannes. That was literally almost two years ago now. Uh, where that one is another one where it starts here and then it just keeps going and going. And you know, obviously that one is more morphing in uh, genre and stuff. This one stays consistently as a drama. Um and stuff, or arguably horror film, and uh, yeah, it kind of stays there. But uh, but still, um, yeah, I think it it really does you know take you along for the ride, and 
It's, I mean, it's only an hour, a little over an hour and a half uh, without credits. I think it's about an hour, maybe without credits, it's like an hour 35, somewhere in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really flies by. And when it's over, you know, you definitely have that sense of, a little bit of sense of relief that you don't have to be living <laughs> with these uh, this troubled character anymore and stuff. Um, but it definitely, yeah, if, if you, again, if you know anybody who's had dementia or who's suffered from... Um, uh, Alzheimer's and, and other forms of dementia and stuff. I mean, yeah, it's it's absolutely one that you'll you'll remember, and it's one that's uh, it's worth seeing, even if you know you know you're gonna cry at it, even if you know you're gonna have a, a big reaction to it. It's it's it is it is one to see, definitely. Um, so yeah, uh, and I've really I've really you know thought about it and stuff. I'm like, wow, I I don't know. I mean, I put it, you know, Minari is here, the father is like literally here or here. It's like it's. <laughs> It's like there's, I mean, they're definitely one and two. I like this better than Nomadland uh, myself for the for uh, favorite films of the year. This is it, number two or number one. It's like it's it keeps rotating. It's like some days. It's like I don't really think there's nothing that's really sticking out to me that was like a uh, obviously not a major flaw, but you know, there's nothing sticking out to me that 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 really bugged me. I mean, there's nothing that I I don't know if there's much I would have changed. I mean. It's like the performances are pitch perfect. Uh, the you know the art direction, the you know production design was nominated, and this is you know I'm I'm more used to you know uh, and I'm sure we all are the more period pieces being nominated. But you know if you want to nominate stuff that's more contemporary, this is a good choice because the production design, uh, as you know, it was kind of alluded to, and I've talked about before before I saw the film, it does play a major role in the film. It really does uh, catapult this movie to the next level where. Uh, it, it gets tricky with its production design and definitely with the editing and stuff. I'm glad that was also mentioned there with an, uh, with a nomination on Oscars morning. Um, my goodness. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this is definitely a, uh, a, a, a great film for sure. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know, again, very sad at times, horrific at times for, you know, for the right reasons. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really a, a, a masterclass of filmmaking and, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a ten out of ten for me, and I, I I still you know between that and Minari, it's it's one of those two <laughs> for best of the uh, for my vote for you know who I would vote for if I were an Oscar voter and stuff for best picture, it would be tough, really tough. Um, God, I mean, I don't know, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'll watch them both again someday. You know, a couple months down the road when they're both out on disc and stuff, I'll I'll watch them again and. And I'll I'll try to sort out okay which one sticks up a little better you know which one do I think stands around more but yeah <laughs> for now consider it a tie for for best film of the year anyway so that's that's my little uh, review on that so let's get back to the nominees here and stuff so supporting actors I do think it does come down to the two that I thought it would come down to at Critics Choice and I, I it will I think again be these two at BAFTA and then arguably these two at the Oscars too and that's uh, Yuya Jung and uh, uh, Maria Bakalova, and I'm right now thinking in the pedigree of okay, fourth, third, second, first, in the second place, I got to go Maria. I think uh, Yu Ya Jung is, is the one to win here, and that's be partially because I'm picking not Minari for ensemble. Um, so um, yeah, I think uh, I think Maria definitely she's got a lot of steam going for the film right now, and this could easily be one where I'm like, oh, I I should have had it, and if she does win Sunday, and that is you know she won a Critics Choice not her not winning at the globes maybe you know i thought it would definitely hurt her but in some ways maybe it's helped her maybe people that you know because there was definitely more you know definitely online at least on twitter and stuff there was kind of an outrage that she did not win uh that one i mean i don't think anybody was pissed off at like rosamund pike for example uh for her winning um because i and i haven't caught up with that one either but as far as i know a lot of people that have seen it really really liked it um and definitely liked her performance in it uh but uh that being said i think uh you know, the outrage of it and stuff, you know, still they were more, I'm, I'm sure, upset at the <laughs> HFPA than they were at uh, at poor Rosamund Pike. Uh, but uh, but definitely, I think some people that were maybe late to the film kind of said, okay, well, why, you know, why are they so upset? Well, let's watch the movie. Let's watch her performance or watch a couple clips of her on late night shows or something, you know, to get a, a little bit of a, a grasp of what the performance is and stuff. And I think maybe that's you know, maybe not for Critics' Choice, but, you know, getting the film a, a screenplay nomination, possibly even getting it in a PGA. I can't remember where the voting was on that. Maybe, possibly on that. Um, definitely getting it the WGA win. I think that could have uh, partially contributed to it. Um, 
So, yeah, it feels like, you know, after the WGA win, after getting another Oscar nomination, which shows more strength of the film and the PGA nomination, even though clearly it didn't win, um, yeah, there's a lot in the sales for, for Maria to win this. And, you know, I think arguably we are overdue for a comedic performance, you know, out-and-out out comedic performance to win an Oscar. I mean, what, the last one, again, you know, we looked to, to that one. I mean, maybe Jack Palance for City Slickers? I mean, maybe... I mean, I can't, you know, nothing else is coming to mind right now. I mean, most of the stuff through the rest of the 90s and, and on has just been dramatic stuff and, you know, you know p- pure, pure dramatic stuff. I mean, uh, you couldn't really call, like, the favorite Olivia Coleman winning for that. That's not really an out-and-out comedy, you know. It's more, you know, uh, comedy in the in the classical sense, you know, with definitely more dramatic moments to it. Um, you know, in Green Book, you know, with Mahershala Ali, that's definitely more dram- dramatic than, than comedy and stuff. So, I, I don't know. I mean, that's just more recent stuff that I'm thinking of, but... I don't know. I mean, nothing, again, nothing is really sticking out to me here. It's like an out and out comedic performance that won. And that's, you know, we could be overdue for that. And this, if she wins SAG, if Maria does win SAG, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much, I'm going to put her head definitely at the Oscars. And then for the BAFTA, probably. But again, Yuya Jun is going to be one to watch out for there. But I do have her winning here. Uh, Number one, it's a great role. Uh, Definitely, uh, and again, not to spoil too much, but it's a showier role than it might be. Uh, on the surface there. There's a lot of great material that she's given to work with there. And it's and it's great performance to match it, too. So, um, and, in, you know, I haven't caught up, again, I, I haven't seen the Borat movie, so I can't judge that one compared to the others. But in this category, I think it's the best performance of, of the bunch, That uh, again, from what I've seen. So, uh, yeah, I would definitely say, yeah, this is, uh, she's the one I'm going to go with, also partially because I'm not picking Minari for ensemble. But, yeah, it's it's going to be, a, it's going to be a close showdown there for sure. Okay, supporting actor feels like it should be Daniel Kaluuya, and that one should be done. Um, the only thing, of course, is Leslie Odom Jr. for One Night in Miami is the only one who's kind of stopping me here that says it's 100% lock. Just because One Night in Miami does have the ensemble nomination, Judas does not. Uh, there's no song category here for you to give Leslie Odom an Oscar or uh, an award. Um, so it's possible that Leslie sticks around here and actually wins this. I don't know, though. I mean, the way that Judas, though, has started, you know, it's gaining uh, momentum with, uh, you know, PG- again, PGA nomination, WGA nomination, scored a few at BAFTA, uh, has, you know, he's won the categories here in, at uh, Critics' Choice in the Globes. It, it does feel like it's a little too far gone for Leslie to come back and, you know, start a winning track all of a sudden. But just for this one award, it's it's a it's a small possibility. I'll grant it some, uh, some leeway as, as a possible upset. But I think it is Daniels to lose. Okay, actress. Uh, this one, again, I think it's kind of a three-way race here uh, for this one, though. Uh, Vanessa, Kirby, and Amy Adams, I think they're going to be glad they're there, but I really don't see either one of those two winning. Vanessa, I mean, yeah, she doesn't have an ensemble nomination. Uh, actually, nobody does in this category except for uh, Viola Davis, uh, which is maybe part of the reason why I give her a little bit more chance here than, say, well, she's not nominated BAFTA, so we know she's not going to win there. Uh, but maybe even more so than the Oscars. You know, she's, uh, I think other than Andra Day and Vanessa, uh, I can't remember now. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, yeah, Vanessa uh, uh, and Viola and uh, uh, Andra Day don't have their films nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. But um, anyways, with this one, though, um, Vanessa, you know, I would say like a 1%. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, because again, that's 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 still my favorite in that category there. Um, I haven't caught up with the United States versus Bailey Holiday either, so um, I think yeah, Vanessa's is is the best there. But I I don't know, I don't really sense a lot of excitement around that one. Um, so it does come down to Viola, Carrie, and Francis. And I think, in all honesty, I think Viola and Francis they're really they're close b- between second and third here. I would probably say Francis in third um, here for Nomadland, uh, just because. And I we I think we talked about this last time, you know, for a while there. But uh, Francis, you know, it's, this is the only chance for Nomadland to win anything at SAG. But you know, she did win um, for um, uh, let's see, I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, she did win for uh, three billboards uh, pretty recently, and that one also won ensemble and supporting actress. That was a pretty heavily awarded film at SAG, and um, and so I think that one's obviously very fresh in their minds. But I, I don't I don't really see, you know, them going with Francis here. I mean, she could win at BAFTA and then possibly win at the Oscars too. Um, 
again, if, if Nomadland, in a rare kind of circumstance there, starts to go on a sweep, I mean, it's again, I, I say the sweeps are still over, but um, we haven't seen a film win more than five Oscars since uh, The Hurt Locker. Uh, that was, what was that, six? I think we, we've talked about that before. But yeah, uh, it was five or six for that one, too. So, And that's when you get into the first year of the um, preferential ballot. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of a... It's kind of a thing where it's like, yeah, it could happen and we could be overlooking it, you know, too. I mean, it is a really good performance still, but um, no, nah, I think it's more Viola or Carrie for this one. And Viola, I think, is the second place pick because she is the one um, that has the ensemble nomination here. Uh, Promising Young Woman couldn't quite make it in for ensemble. Nomadland didn't make it. So, yeah, she's the only one like, um, not like uh, Leslie Odom Jr. He's not, you know, obviously you've got a, a The Five Bloods. Uh, Trial Chicago 7 and One Night Miami all in for ensemble and all three of them have uh, somebody in for supporting actor but um, that being said um, you know Viola you know also was one who's won recently here for Fences Um, she's not nominated BAFTA so you know I think if they want to award Ma Rainey something they've clearly got best actor right there for Chadwick Boseman who again I think is pretty far ahead to win that one Um, so I think they go Carrie Mulligan here and I think Carrie wins um, to help solidify her uh, arguable frontrunner status for this category. But again, it's going to be really interesting to see what BAFTA does. And I think it's, uh, you know, I, I'm tempted. I'm really tempted that if, uh, you know, you hear here, maybe not first, but you'll hear it here. If Vanessa Kirby wins BAFTA, I'm going to be very tempted to switch to her to the Oscars too. Possibly. You know, I, I'll definitely sleep on it, you know, after it happens and stuff. But uh, it'll be tempting to put her ahead. Um, cause Carrie and Viola are not nominated at BAFTA. Um, if they go Francis, you know, then I think, okay, then I'll, I'll probably stick with Carrie at the Oscars. But, and if they go with, uh, uh, Bucky, uh, whoever, whatever last, Bucky Bacra, Bacron, whatever, I can't remember her last name, sorry, but, uh, or it might even be, not, not, might not even be Bucky, the one from, the gal from Rocks. If she wins, which I have her predicted win right now. Um, I'll probably, that's definitely sticking with Carrie at the Oscars, but, um, yeah, so uh, pretty much I'm going to stick with Carrie unless it's uh, Vanessa Kirby at BAFTA. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I do have, uh, Carrie Mulligan winning here on, uh, Sunday and it's another one where it's like, you know, Promising Young Woman is a Best Picture nominee. Uh, it's likely at this point to win, uh, original screenplay. So if they want to give it something, this is the only chance to do it. So, um, you know, it's the same argument as No Man Land, but I think Carrie, I think, feels like she's ahead for uh, for the Oscars there. Okay, then film actor, yeah, it's, it's uh, best actor's got to be Chadwick Boseman, I think. I mean, I, I would personally, I mean, I think of the two performances, I think Chadwick still stands ahead as my favorite in this category. But, uh, man, I mean, Anthony Hopkins winning anything for The Father, I mean, I'll, I'll, t- I'll still take it. I'll still take it. It's, it's great, great work. But I, I could say the same for Riz Ahmed, too, for Sound of Metal. I think he did a fantastic job. And, you know, um, maybe in another year, he would have been on, like, a Rami Malek track, where he's the kind of younger uh, younger guy who gets everybody's attention with this uh, performance, even though he's been around um, even though he's been around a little while, you know, on television and other film roles and stuff. This is his kind of big breakout role. Um, so, he, you know, it could have been that, but uh, eh, not quite. Anyway, so um, yeah, so I think I think it's Chadwick's definitely, but uh, but yeah, okay. Then ensemble, uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick with what I went with originally here, and that's Trial of the Chicago Seven. Um, arguably, since we knew it was gonna be definitely in the race after uh, Netflix picked it up from Paramount and stuff, yeah, I think everybody knew this one was gonna be at least an early front runner for the film ensemble category here. Uh, it did win ensemble, if I'm remembering correctly, at the Critics Choice Awards. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a pretty, um, you know, was picked there too. So I, I think, yeah, I think it's Chicago seven. It's just the size of the cast, the performances, it's kind of undeniable in this category. Um, obviously Minari, you know, is a smaller ensemble, you know, Korean cast or uh, Asian, Asian American cast. Um, so, you know, they, you know, I don't want to say that, you know, been there, done that just because they picked Parasite last year, because obviously that was a momental, you know, monumental win, in a definitely at an award show that really has shut out a lot of foreign language performances over the years, and obviously more often than not they'll snub them rather than nominate them. Uh, so that was and Parasite not also having any other nominations at SAG and stuff. You know that was a huge huge win for the film and stuff last year. Um, 
so I, and not to, and that's not to say now every time they have a Korean or an Asian you know cast in here they're going to pick them. No, I don't. I don't. You know, I won't. I won't go that far. But I think Minari. It's definitely going to pose a, a big threat there because I think the other three are not Best Picture nominees. Um, and other than uh, One Night Miami, which might go over two here, um, there's an obvious place to award it somewhere else. So I think it is down between Chicago Seven and Minari. And then Minari, though. That's the only thing is if they give supporting actress to Maria, I don't know. It's going to be, t- I mean, not impossible, but it's going to be a little hard for me to see that one going over three. Uh, definitely, it's it's a little bit of an easier swill uh, pill to swallow than seeing uh, seeing uh, Chicago Seven go over three. But yeah, it's I mean it's yeah I mean they both uh, and Defy Bloods you know what was it these three and. Um, yeah, it was, it was just these three, right? These three tied for most nominations, if I remember right. Um, if I'm remembering right. Um, oh, no, Ma Rainey's got three, too. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like a whole bunch. I remember a whole bunch of them got three <laughs> that morning, and it was like a... Yeah, it was a four-way tie, right? Yeah, Chicago 7, Ma Rainey's, Defy Bloods, Minari. Yeah, all got three. Yeah. Okay, uh, I thought I... Yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> Moving on. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's definitely between those two, though, Minari and Chicago 7. But I'm going to go Chicago 7. It's, again, very much like Spotlight in that way, where it's like no matter where the Best Picture race is going, Spotlight felt like it had that, that SAG ensemble win and stuff. So, yep. All right, that's all I got for now. So, um, yeah, I don't really think we're going to come back here um, unless, you know, Sunday night, if, if there's enough to talk about there. If, we, if it goes fairly well for me, predictions-wise, I think I'll say that. If we have any huge shockers, like if, uh, I don't know, we'll just name, uh, yeah, if Vanessa Kirby happens to win Actress or Amy Adams, or if it's uh, Yun, uh, Stephen Yun for uh, Minari, or if it is um, Helena Zangel for Supporting Actress, or something crazy that will sh- shake up the race a little bit, then we'll come back and we'll definitely talk about it night of. But um, otherwise, um, yeah, otherwise I think we're, you know, kind of caught up on stuff for a little while here. We've got um, this coming week, we've got, um, if I've got my numbers right here, uh, two guild awards that are going to go out. That's the Visual Effects Guild and the Makeup Guild. Um, That next Sunday, uh, or next Saturday, rather, will be the Art Directors Guild, the Directors Guild, and I thought there was one more. Those two, sorry. And then BAFTA will be the next day on the 11th. And then the week after that, we get, I think the rest of the guilds will all fall in that week. And then a week from the Oscars, the 25th uh, is the is the Oscars. But a week before that, the 18th, I think, is the last guild. And that's the Cinematographers Guild. Um, which, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a two-way race on that one between Nomadland and Mank. Um, unless they go Chicago 7 or something a little more... Uh, Something a little more random there. Um, I think it's the last one, at least. Um, let's see, where's Ace Eddie at? I haven't seen that one here. Yeah, it's the day before. Okay, so that's like the Saturday before. So, um, yeah, so then it will kind of be in the final stretch there after BAFTA with the rest of the guilds and then the final Oscar voting starting. Uh, I think the week, I think it's like the day before BAFTA or something like that, or, or for the Friday before or something is when final Oscar voting starts, or it's it's somewhere around there, or right after BAFTA, one of those two, but... Um, in the general vicinity of, of BAFTA is when uh, Oscar voting starts. But, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so I think that's, again, I think that's all I've got for now. We, we're kind of coming down to the uh, the final laps here of this race. It's been a long one, you know. Uh, we've been, you know, kind of more or less uh, speculating on stuff since September. Um, you know, and it's it's just really quick. It's been really crazy to see this whole year. I mean, Obviously, with COVID and with, you know, uh, social unrest and with presidential election and with uh, uh, insurrections and, and everything going on in between. Um, yeah, it's it's been a crazy nutso year. And it's really, I mean, just particularly talking about Oscar races, though, really strange to see. OK, so back in September, we were even, uh, me particularly, really questioning whether or not the Oscars were even going to go on um, this year, or they would lump everything in together with 2022, hoping, you know, we had a vaccine by then that was starting to get people inoculated and stuff. Um, really, really crazy how that's how that's been uh, going on there and stuff. Um, and, you know, it's really strange to see where we started there and now where we're at. You know, we're in the 1st of April. Um you know, as far as, you know, vaccines go, it seems like we're, you know, kind of hitting in stride now with the number of uh, vaccines going out. Um, 
you know, we're starting to see more and more states open open up the eligibility and stuff. Uh, more and more of my relatives are getting vaccinated. Um, uh, at least three, at least three I know of are, are fully vaccinated. Um, uh, just, you know, I, I won't name it, of course, but my workplace even today said, yeah, we might start vaccinating at work here in the next few weeks. So even I'm uh, <laughs> going to be in the next uh, phase here, hopefully in the next few weeks. Um, if not, I'll try to find it on my own anyways. But I don't know, I'm a younger 25 year old, mostly some belly fat there, but <laughs> mostly healthy guy. So uh, definitely, I don't want to go. You know, that's that's the thing I've been saying to all my relatives stuff. You know, as far as oh, when are you going to? I'm going to say, uh, you know, when are you going to get a vaccine? I'm like, after not after everybody, obviously, because we can't tell that. But you know, after a lot of people that need it before I do get it. You know, uh, you know the people who are you know have higher BMI counts, the people who are elder, who have more heart conditions, blood pressure conditions. Uh, uh, other obesity problems and stuff, uh, diabetes and, and everything else. Let them, you know, let them go first. Absolutely. Let them go first on this one. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll sit it out for a little, you know, a little while until, uh, we get more people, uh, in the right spots first and stuff. So, um, you know, but that being said though, as soon as it's kind of more open to me, yeah, I'll, I'll get, uh, preferably the double dose. I'll get <laughs> double, you know, double dip or whatever. Yeah. Definitely get the, uh, one of the two dose ones, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and, uh, I mean, the Oscar, they're very much, uh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about really quick was, uh, the shows here. Uh, so SAG, you know, it's going to be really crazy to see the difference between SAG and the Oscars potentially both in the same month. Cause the Oscars right now are saying, unless you're in, um, another country, they just recently changed this by the way. Uh, because before they were saying, oh, no, absolutely no zooming. Nobody gets in over zoom or Skype or any of these other ones. It's you're in person or you're not there at all. Stuff like that. Um, and then it's like, well, what about the people overseas? Like, uh, I guess Britain right now, it's like, unless it's absolutely viewed as essential travel and it's like reviewed like weeks in advance, you're not getting out of the country and shit like that. It's like, wow. Uh, so like Emerald Fennel and a few of the other, you know, Anthony Hopkins and quite a few of the other ones, it's like, uh, what, what, how are they gonna, <laughs> that's not really fair to them. Uh, what about, you know, the, um, uh, there's some filmmakers, uh, from Asia and from, uh, Hong Kong, China, Japan, you know? How are they going to, you know, that's not really fair for them either. You know, they're kind of not in stricter, you know, they're, they're kind of less strict than Britain is right now and the, uh, some of the other uh, European countries right now. But uh, but still, it's not really fair to them. So they're like, eh, we're going to amend that. Yeah, if you're overseas, you can you can uh, zoom in and stuff. So <laughs> they've amended that at least. But um, yeah, but yeah, they're, you know, they're sticking with in person, you know, um, assuming being masked up and stuff. Uh, if you get to the stage and you win, obviously, you'll probably want to take your mask off, you know uh, more than like, I mean, obviously if you're not comfortable, you know, whatever, but, uh, but still, uh, you know, that compared to SAG, which is going ahead, you know, we talked about it briefly here a few videos ago, but, uh, when it was kind of more rumor status, but, uh, you know, or being reported, but not being confirmed, uh, at least that I knew of at the time. And that was, you know, they're, they're announcing the winners, uh, in advance, uh, not to us, but to, you know, the individuals, um, and then they're doing a short, you know, couple minutes acceptance speech and they're putting it all together in a package and it's only going to be an hour long. So it's, yeah, it's going to be really, really crazy to see the difference between the two, uh, award shows there. The Oscars more or less going on as normal with a couple exceptions and that normal being, you know, as normal as you can get right now. And then, um, SAG who's like, no, 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 we're not even, <laughs> it's, it's almost 180 degrees, <laughs> uh, difference there, but, um, yeah, anyway, so here's hoping though that, um, the Oscars, the SAGs, uh, what, whatever's going to happen at BAFTA, I haven't read up on how they're doing their show, um, however that goes down, first and only time, here's hoping that's the first and only time that we have to deal with this shit, and we're back to good old times when we get to, uh, Oscars 2022. All right. Uh, yeah, I've, I've said my piece. I'm going to go ahead and peace out, and uh, we'll see everybody uh, either Sunday night, depending on how crazy the awards get, or uh, sometime thereafter, and we'll uh, discuss uh, maybe a few questionable races in the Oscars. And uh, definitely before we get to BAFTA, though, uh, we'll get some final BAFTA predictions out before the, uh, before the 10th. And again, I didn't have this open, so try again.